Hi everyone, I'm Adrien from the University of Aix-Marseille in France and I met Gilad four years ago. We worked together on an experiment and then he invited me to join the mass replication project and I wanted to tell you about my story, my view and my advice about this project and how I am involved in it. Four years ago, I worked with my supervisor, Anthony Lantion, on a replication of the exceptionality effect, which is a cognitive bias leading to regret more an exceptional behavior rather than a routine behavior. We try to extend this replication by showing that exceptional actions are perceived as freer than routine actions, so it's about free will. So after running the first experiment, uh, we found out that Gilad was also working on a similar topic. We decided to contact him and then we worked together. He shared his one experiment with us. Uh, we shared some data with him that leads to another publication. And finally, we collaborate on a third experiment that leads to a manuscript that is now under review. After our collaboration, Anthony and Gilad arranged a workshop in France where Gilad shared his view on uh, the open science movement, on the replication crisis, and the importance of replicating and reproducing the original effects to improve the credibility of science and more specifically on psychological science. And then Gilad went back to Hong Kong and things could have stopped here. Some months later, I found a Twitter post made by Gilad in which he was seeking collaborators to work on a meta-analysis about the exceptionality effects because the students, the researcher students, Lucas Kutcher, uh, graduated and left academia. More specifically, uh, Gilad asked for someone who knew the method of meta-analysis and had some knowledge about the exceptionality effects. Well, thought I didn't have any experience with meta-analysis, uh, I did have a bit of experience with the exceptionality effect. So I took my chance and I wrote a mail to Gilad trying to be as persuasive as possible. And it worked. Gilad accepted to work with me and it led to a successful collaboration. To be clear, that year involved a huge amount of work. I learned from scratch how to make a meta-analysis, how to make a manuscript of meta-analysis, how to make um, the air script, how to make the analysis in itself, uh, to make uh, the publication bias, to understand how effect sizes work, to understand air markdown, to understand uh, how to pre-register a meta-analysis. This is very different than a regular pre-registration, etc. Well, in a nutshell, I had the opportunity to learn new skills that resulted in a publication, but that also helped me to improve and build skills for the rest of my career. After that, I used my skills to make other meta-analysis, two meta-analysis, one that is already under review and one uh, that we will pre-register soon. So three meta-analysis in two years. I will come back to uh, the meta-analysis skill at the end of the video where we will talk about my future uh, because it is related to a meta-analysis template. Gilad sent me an email in October, November 2018 with a link to the replications made by his students in Hong Kong asking me if I'd like to review some of them if I had the time. I looked at all the replications that were made and I found that they were very close to my area of expertise uh, because uh, in judgment and decision making, we tend to rely on the same main theories. So it's very easy to build bridges between the studies conducted in this area. So I decided to choose a study to review it uh, randomly. It was my first year of PhD students and it was my first experience with peer reviewing. During our university uh, study as undergraduate or graduate students, we read a lot, but we read uh, 
already published literature uh, with higher quality and not much room for improvement. I found out that uh, by reviewing the undergraduate's work, uh, we have more room for improvement and exercise or uh, exercise or critical thinking on these papers. Um, it makes us uh, improve our own writing skills. I was surprised to find mistakes in these papers that I also tend to make in my own papers or in my own writings, um, but without e even thinking that there are errors. You know we see the moat in the neighbor's eye, but we don't see the beam in ours. I believe this peer review process helps us gain um, insight into our own work and help early career researcher, uh, as I am, uh, develop important research skills. So I reviewed uh, two groups with one study and I continued to review other studies in the following years. Besides improving my skills, what has joining the mass replication project done for me? I learned a lot about replication and extension of studies, but I also gained um, skills regarding air scripts, air markdown, converting effect sizes, poor analysis, pre-registration, well, everything about how to conduct an experiment or a research openly, transparently, um, and respectful of the original research. I also found many resources uh, that are very helpful for my research, for my studies. Um, templates, guides, guidelines, videos, uh, mocks, workshops. Uh, we share a lot of resources that I might not have known otherwise. It made me improve my critical thinking, it brought me some skills, some resources, and but also, and more importantly, uh, it made me meet new people and it gave me uh, the opportunity to collaborate with new researchers. I met Kit Young, who was also working on another meta-analysis. Uh, we peer review each other, we improved our manuscripts a lot, and it was very productive and it continues now because we both are working on templates for meta-analysis. I also met Prasad Chandrasekhar. Um, we helped a lot each other we, with many manuscripts we had and we shared to each other. And we are working on manuscript together that uh, will be published one day or I hope so. And finally I worked with Cameron Brick and I would like to talk a bit more about it. One day I received a mail from Gilad who asked me if I'd like to work uh, with Cameron Brick from the University of Amsterdam, Netherlands. I later received a second email from directly from uh, Cameron who asked me to work more specifically on uh, the air script and the analysis. So I looked at it, uh, we met by Zoom and Cameron explained me that the, the data worked with uh, the tidyverse packages, which is a collection of packages um, that shape the data in a specific way that makes it easier uh, to, to, to analyze. In the same time, uh, Cameron explained to me that he didn't know much about the air markdown, uh, which is a type of script that makes it easier to render the output of an analysis. So basically we share our knowledge, me on the air markdown, he on the tidyverse, to produce a, a better analysis. What I mean by that is that for every analysis, Cameron shaped the data uh, and then I make the analysis and I render the output and I take the output into the main manuscript. Also, it provided me with uh, a new figure that I didn't know about at this time, which is called the rain cloud plot. Um, but, and now I know how to easily make one uh, with the air script he provided. Cameron worked with Kit on the introduction and discussion sections, and we worked together on the methods and results sections. He was very motivating and positive, and we submitted the manuscripts uh, in September. So with this replication and extension, 
I learned a new air skill. I have new resource uh, to make a beautiful plot. I found a new way to analyze the data. And I found a new collaborator that I would be pleased to work with again. So it was completely worth it. But this case is closed. We are waiting the peer reviewing process. Uh, what I am working on right now. After my fourth meta-analysis, uh, Gilad invited me to work with him on a template uh, to help other researchers to make their own open science meta-analysis. This template is designed to help researchers pre-register their meta-analyses, um, conduct those in a transparent way following guidelines like Prisma or Nero, and provide a ready-made uh, air script, dataset, manuscript, supplementary, already made. This way, researchers won't have to make a meta-analysis from scratch, but they will just have to adapt uh, this meta-analysis to their own research question. We try and think about most things researchers will need to conduct their own meta-analysis. Uh, we have two templates, one for uh, experimental meta-analysis that is led by Kit Young and one for correlational meta-analysis that I lead. And the point here is that uh, to build this correlational meta-analysis template, I had to learn to make one. I had experience in conducting an experimental meta-analysis, uh, but I had to learn how to conduct a correlational meta-analysis. I had to learn the differences and the similarities compared to a correlational meta-analysis. Through this project, I met new people, for example, Kevin Nanakdewa, who uh, comes from the University of Singapore, and he is working on a correlational meta-analysis uh, about belief in free will. Uh, I also met Velvet Nalim, who uh, is also working on the meta-analysis about the belief in free will, but uh, she leads um, her own meta-analysis about the correlation between uh, values and the dark triad threats. Uh, she helped me a lot uh, with my air scripts and I learned a lot with her. So I'm producing a very valuable template that will help many researchers to make their own meta-analysis in a proper way and I acquire a lot of new skills by doing it and also I meet new friendly people. So now what about you? Thank you for watching this video. If you're interested in my projects or if you're interested in what I am doing, please send me an email at the following address. Um, I am always pleased to meet new people. Bye.